as a, as a studio, we wanted to commit to projects in the cultural domain because um, commercial communication is everywhere. Everything is about money and making money and we want to make culture visible in the, in the public domain. So that was a very intrinsic motivation for us as designers. Hi there everybody, here is Mario. Welcome to another episode of Design Interviews and Questions, where we interview designers and design experts from all around the world. Today's guest is Nikki Gonitsen, a Dutch designer and co-founder of Studio Tonic in Amsterdam. So welcome Nikki, thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me, Mario. <laughs> Super. So if you don't mind, I would start with the initial question, which everyone knows, but is what made you become a designer? Yeah, what made me become a designer? It's of course a long way back. Um, I think I was always interested in art and, and I was drawing myself a lot in high school and I loved art history. And then when I was 18, I went to uh, Chambre d'Amis, which was a, uh, an outdoor exhibition in the streets of uh, Ghent in Belgium made by the, the Belgian curator and, and uh, museum director, Jan Hoed. And, um, and there I was sort of um, um, so impressed because walking through the city, um, you could go and see art in people's houses, like from a doctor's place to uh, student homes and everything. And it was so interesting to see all those different contexts and, and seeing art in the middle of society somehow. That, that completely changed my perspectives. And you know, we normally art is in, in art is shown within the walls of a museum, and this uh, this changed my my view and everything. So I decided to go on to art school, but then um, of course uh, I had to make a choice in, in what to do, um, uh, choosing a department. And the fine art department was somehow too free for me. I didn't, I couldn't uh, really relate to that. Um, and uh, and I also thought, yeah, I need to find something for later, you know, to get a good job because um, I also wanted to be an independent woman. And uh, and in graphic design, I thought maybe that's that's a good uh, good idea to to look at that. But then I at the at that time. I was not so relaxed because uh, uh, it felt also um, a bit, a bit um, uh, stiff, what's the name, uh, stifling, you know, because I thought graphic design was all about uh, millimeters and geometrical forms and shapes. So, um, uh, so at that time I was sort of uh, uh, into, you know, I was doubting very much. And then uh, a, a teacher, his name was uh, Wim Ball, he said to me, um, you know, don't worry. With graphic design, you can can do everything you like. You can do, you know, everything you want to do in life. So so just do it and and don't worry about it. So I started to paint my record sleeves while listening to music, and uh, I remember I was making bags from in the shapes of oranges and lemons, and I was I was uh, approach I was approached uh, the graphic design field completely in a free way, and that's what. Uh, was attracted me at that time but it was also a sort of um, a sense of uh, a balance between being free and social um, but also having so sort of uh, restrictions so it, it complete freedom in fine arts was not really appealing to me so that's why graphic design yeah that's why I became a designer I think yeah, yeah. Is that designed for you, like to create connections between your works and people? Um, uh, yes, I think uh, very much so. For me, graphic design is very much um, about the real world around me. It's a way to understand the world around me. So I think that we all always uh, reach out to other people. Uh, it's about communication. Um, it's about you and me and the rest of the world. So yeah, it's it's uh, that's also how I see our studio. We are the, the work we do is always related to the world around us, and that's also 
in back then I was afraid of uh, of making fine arts because I thought you know who's who is who does want to see my art you know I didn't have this message to spread to the world but I was interested in the world around me I was very curious and, and I wanted to know everything so yeah that that related very much to to people and communication yeah and as a designer like what do you create? Because, for example, you also with Tonic, you published uh, your book, the book of the studio about the studio. So mm -hmm. for me, it's really important for you guys, like your philosophy in design is not just a showcase of your works, but is more about we want to show people our philosophy in design. Yeah, I think it's very important to to. Um to show to other people and to, to share with other designers the reason why you design. And, and like I said, that has for us, uh, it's, not ne it's never one reason. It's always a multiple thing of uh, multiple things. So it has to be, it has to, uh, you know, uh, it's about the world around us. Like I said, it's, it's uh, social. It has to, it has some democratic values. It's, um, it's about um, engagement, it's about collaboration, it's about multiple things. And, um, and that, that is really important for me in design. Yeah. And when you approach like a new project with the studio, which, yeah. which is the most interesting part for you? Uh, so you mean what we create or? Like or, in the process. Is there a specific oh, I, part of the process that it's really interesting for you? Um, well, of course, first I need to introduce my partner, Thomas. So uh, um, he's my partner in work and life. And so, and, and also, of course, uh, the people in the studio. We work with 15 people in the studio. And uh, the, I think the collaboration is the most important part of the process. So um, um, we always discuss everything together with the people in the studio, with the young, young people, the older ones, the project managers, but also with the clients and, uh, and um, uh, the people we work with, maybe people from different fields, different um, uh, creative fields. And um, so the collaboration, collaboration is essential and that's really important part of the process but also the engagement. And um, I think it's very important when you really engage with your project and with the things you do, then uh, something comes out which is passionate and then, and then it's personal and then it will always make a big impact. So, um, so in your question, um, what is an important process? It's the process is uh, collaboration and engagement, but of course, then we start to work on on the technique, on on uh, on the the urge to play. You know, you start to to work with the material together, and we make concepts and and try to come up with good solutions for for problems or projects, which is of course always multiple because uh, you cannot have one good solution somehow. So. There are always many solutions to, to a project. Yeah, but um, so process and what we create is, of course, yeah, we create, we try to create meaningful communication. So design is not only about uh, the world around us, it's also about communication because it's about, it's, you know, we, we, uh, we want to reach out to each other and we want to reach out to people. And, um, and we want to reveal our ideas and our opinions. And uh, yeah, and that's communication. And that means language and image, and of course. And, and the transformation between language and image and how do you bring that to, to another public? How does it work like in the studio? Like at the beginning you make a uh entire like brainstorming with everyone and then you start to develop a bit and then you ask to others to work on it or you freed people in the beginning and then you comes in into the project yeah it depends of course it depends with the project we have um, um, 
and many people work on one project. So there are often, uh, for instance, now we work for M Plus. It's a museum in Hong Kong, and uh, and I think we work with six people on this project because we we like to uh, come up with concepts, of course, but then we experiment all the time. Uh, so first we try to set the rules or the the question, and then we start to experiment. Um, and we try to answer certain questions, of course, all the time. And then it goes to from we talk with everybody. So, for instance, with five or four designers, we start to talk about it. And that's what we miss at the moment very much, because now with the with Zoom and everything, everybody works at home and everybody works hard. But the discussions and the, and and the fact that we hang everything on the wall and then we just start to look at it and an experiment that's that's uh, that's really it's it's not uh, fluent anymore the organic process is not there so from there um, yeah then then specific skills come in because we have for instance Roy is our super motion designer and he makes the translation often to to great motion designs and films and Joost is very analytic and he's very good in structuring all the information. So we, we, uh, we feel that we add up in skills and in, and in uh, expertise. And, that's, uh, and that makes, uh, makes it interesting. That makes it really uh, vivid and lively. And, uh, and what is really important in a studio that, it, that we all work on an equal level. You know, we are all the same. And that's also... I think very important for everything and every, in life and 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 in, in in on a global scale we should all collaborate on an equal level. So um, yeah, so that's the process in our studio. I think it's um, it's about uh, collaboration and engagement. Yeah, and skills. Yeah, expertise. Do, do yeah. you think perfection exists in design? Um, perfection exists. I think there's always, um, we all, every designer wants to reach a certain quality. We're always looking for quality in what we do. But um, uh, I think it's also, you know, when I should live in a perfect world, it would be very stifling. It would be, I would be very nervous. A perfect world is, it doesn't exist. And uh, um, so I should say that there are designers who embrace uh, imperfect, imperfection, like Hong Lam. He's, uh, he's also an Aji member. In, he's from Hong Kong. And he, he shows in his work, he uses mistakes and, and misleads in his production pro processes. And that's really interesting. And I think we all should embrace imperfectness as a, as a goal in life. And of course, I can. I'm. I really enjoy when something is really perfect, for uh, for you know when something somebody makes something perfect. But the the the, the joy is only for a short period. I think when something is provocative, or radical, or or um, you know, slightly edgy, it that that makes me more sort of uh, that's interesting to me much more than, than perfectness. Sometimes when, when, when things come from printer, of course, then, you, then you're always frustrated because it's not perfect, because the color you were looking for or the, 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 the glance or whatever, or the binding was not done very well, then you're sort of frustrated, but you know, that's fine in the end, that's fine. So in, in perfection, I think it's, uh, it's difficult. It, it will, it's also stifling, you know, it doesn't work always. Today with the studio, uh, you work, as you said, a lot on motion design, for example, but when you started, motion was something that you couldn't expect to do in design. No. But um, yeah. what, what, what do you think about the contemporary scene of design with motion, with all these new technologies and so on? Well, I think it's just great. I mean, um, uh, as much as I, I really love to learn from the past, 
um, I, I would I love to learn from from the future and 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 the present and the younger generation now. They make absolutely fantastic work. Um, the new technology gave us so many uh, options and possibilities, and um, um, and of course the younger generation has a huge accessible. They are accessible to many social platforms, so they have they are able to share their work. They, they are able to start a dialogue, uh, discussions on a global scale, and I think that's amazing. Um, it's what I really find interesting is to see all those different cultures and the cultural backgrounds from the designers. And I was in the luck, um, lucky position as um, in Aji as president. We uh, went to. Um, uh, we could find new, it was our goal to find new young members for Aji, to make Aji, to bring Aji to a next uh, generation. Um, and we, every year we have this conference at Aji um, in uh, different cities of the world, like Seoul or uh, Paris or, or um, Sao Paulo or whatever, Mexico. And, uh, and we bring in a lot of new members and we, our goal was to let in a lot of young non-Western female designers, and it was uh, fantastic to see them them on stage and to and when they uh, show presented their work to us because they they have this sort of uh, yeah a mix of designs you know they they don't they not only use uh, graphic design as their mediums so the media changed of course also because of new technology. But also the use of filmmaking and installations and and um, uh, lots of other media, and that uh, brings a lot to Aji and also vice versa. So also the, the other way around. I think it's very important that the young people can see and have access to what the the, the older generation made and um, designed. Um, so. Yeah, I think it's great. The, the the new generation is doing great great stuff. Yeah. And not always, of course. I mean, it's not always high quality, but uh, but yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, contemporary design. Yeah. And you started in a previous generation when internet was not uh, important in daily process and today like we cannot neither like think about internet because it's something that it's so normal today in, in mm -hmm. the process but how did it change your uh, way to design well the internet of course brought a huge revolution to every aspect of human life and I think uh, it's, of course, now the most uh, important medium for communication. And it's also the way uh, to organize and manipulate um, all aspects of social behavior. So as designers, we are not only about concerned about form and shape, but also about meaning and social structures and about ecology and new economies and, um, and privacy, for instance, that's also an important matter. And I think all these uh, these perspectives have greatly changed through the internet. And yeah, of course, so it's it's very important. Um, it made the world more accessible, and um, and at the same time, it also shows the complexity of the world, uh, which is not always easy, of course. Um, so the yeah, and and it made design. Um, you know, we can do everything with all the new technology and it, and we can share our designs, like I said, on a global scale through the social platforms. And we can look up everything we like, which is very important. So the whole research part um, in our work, in our profession is so much easier and we are able to respond to each other on an easy way. But on the other hand, you know, it should stay also authentic. I mean, we have to stay authentic and, and look for new ways and just don't copy the things we see on the internet. It's a source of inspiration and it's a source of uh, knowledge. Um, yeah, but it changed. It changed everything <laughs> completely. Yeah. 
exactly. A tonic, I mean, you, you have different uh, designers, so also really young designers, and yeah. but you also like gives lectures, like you came in Basel last year to give a lecture. So you see like the different schools around the world, et cetera. Yeah. And how do you see design education today? Well, the design education, education today is, it is always important. I see, I see design uh, schools as a free place, a place to experiment. Um, I teach, for instance, at the Design Academy for a couple of years in, in Eindhoven. And the nice thing of the Design Academy is that they are not organized in, um, in departments like graphic design or, um, or fine arts or photography, but they are organized in themes on social relevancy. So they have a leisure, uh, for instance, as a, a department, well-being, activity, identity, and at the masters they teach uh, contextual design and social design and information design. I was teaching at information design. And um, uh, so that's interesting to see how people uh, and students talk on a multidisciplinary way uh, about these topics of, of life. And um, so I think uh, um, multidisciplinary is important for education. On the other hand, also intergenerational contact is important. I think uh, because of the growth of new technology and new media, students know so much more about the techniques than the older um, than teacher, teachers do. So instead of passing on information to the younger generation, I think we have to collaborate on an equal level. Like I said before, it's always easy to do everything on an equal level. And in that sense, we, I think we really learn from each other. Um, and um, yeah, I have a, a nice example to that because I saw how the school party in, in South Korea, the school of An San So, uh, he, they, they are building literally together with the students, the, the school, brick by brick, and they, they shape the program together teachers and students and they do they put in uh, programs like meditations and and they making their food together and they so it's it's also a way of life it's a mentality and i think that's uh, that's also really important for education that that it's it's like i said intergenerational that we learn from each other and then it's and that it's uh, multidisciplinary yeah um yeah what can i say um, you know, teachers and students should experiment on on new ideas and methods, and uh, of course also new forms and shapes and questions, uh, because it's a it's a safe place. And later, when you become a professional, you you cannot make any mistakes. You know, you of course you can make mistakes, but but uh, in school you are able to. Uh, to fail, which is good, always good to fail and to, um, yeah. What also is important is, is developing a broad mind and developing specific skills. So I think in school, it's also good to, to have this, to strike for this balance. Um, so in later in life, you are, you're having an open mind to, to collaborate but also have a specific expertise to, to add to, to a certain uh, um, situation. Um, what is also difficult, I think, in education at the moment is that, that there are a lot of um, um, uh, teachers who need to get academic degrees. So they need to do an MA or a PhD. And I think it's important that, that students and, and their heroes from the past are, are, are working together. And, and so many uh, graphic designers who don't have an MA or a PhD or whatever uh, academic skill, they cannot teach any longer. And I think that's, that's really a shame. So in that sense, we are going to another era where there's more hierarchy instead of less and um, less flexibility 
Uh, I think it's very important that there's also an academic uh, debate on, on uh, art schools, universities. Of course, that's very important. But it should also be more flexible and open to, uh, to designers, graphic designers from all over the world who are really good in a specific thing they already do for their career, whole career. Yeah. Be before you said that you like to think about the future. So yeah. what, what do you think about the role of the designer in the future? Um, well, I think that designer, a designer is always thinking in ways of change. Um, so that's, that's in our DNA somehow. We are engaged to culture. Um, and, um, but I think it's always very, for instance, we always said as a, as a studio, we wanted to commit to projects in the cultural domain because um, commercial communication is everywhere. Everything is about money and making money, and we want to make culture visible in the, in the public domain. So that was a very intrinsic motivation for us as designers. But also the public domain, it, I mean, cultural, the cultural debate is only a small part of the world. So later we tried as citizens, as uh, we, tr we wanted to reflect on, on what was happening in our own city, for instance. So we... Uh, engaged with the city of Amsterdam and later we could make the new identity for the city of Amsterdam because we wanted to to to, uh, to give clarity and uh, clear information to the citizens of the of the city and I think the future of design uh, I think there's a, a great role to play because uh, of course Called showing, making culture, dif uh, different cultures, making visible different cultures is important. But it's also important to, to work on a new economy together based on passion. Because, like I said, um, everything is, uh, is now about making money. And, um, and I think in this new economy, there are already a lot of people working in that field, experimenting, uh, trying to bring alternatives, um, for instance, in startups, a lot of startups, young people uh, come up with uh, fantastic projects, new initiatives. Um, I have an example, for instance, uh, Yoni, which is a project uh, we work for. There are a, a couple of young girls and they, um, they made this revolutionary uh, tampon brand. And they try to uh, breaking taboos around the we women uh, uh, circle, and uh, and they are very much. It's it's about empowering women in general, um, and it's a fantastic uh, project we work for, and uh, and we really collaborate with them to make that visible. And they have of course access to very uh, to Insta uh, Instagram and social platforms, and they and we asked young people, young designers and creative creatives to make visuals uh, which were very appealing for the younger um, uh, people, younger women. So Yoni is a nice project, but also Common Land, which is a project um, which is about uh, developing regenerative land use. So they, uh, they are uh, working about on three dimensions like uh, economic, inspirational, and um, uh, social. And with all, they try to bring all the stakeholders around a project together in a collaborat uh, collaborative uh, uh, project. And that's also really important that startups like that and, and, and people think of a new economy where um, social benefit is more important than economic benefit. So I think there's a future. There's a big role for designers to play. Yeah. We arrived to the uh, last question, and which is about the, the moment we are all facing now, this global yeah. pandemic, which is really, really bad. But somehow things are moving and people are trying to help. But do you think has, as a designers, we can help in this moment? Yeah. Yeah, of course. I think, like like I said, we are um, um, agents of change. 
So as agents of change, as designers, we are having and we play an important role to the post-pandemic world. Um, I think um, we have to question the world around us. We have to bring alternatives. We have to experiment all the time. And I think graphic design can be a, a powerful tool. Um, you know, it can be it can empower people to think about this new economy. It can empower people to think about a better world where there is more social equality and uh, and more democracy. And um, and I think when when you saw it, we had our last crisis in 2008, we saw a clear shift in, in the social urgency of our profession after that. And I think that will continue somehow. So, um, of course, the new normal um, I hope that it will be with less consumerism and less travel, although I traveled also a lot in the past and, uh, and, and I'm happy I did because I learned a lot by uh, meeting all those people around the world and all those cultures. But now we have uh, more access to new technology and we all know how to Zoom and to Skype. I think it's, uh, it's important to combine the, the new technology with a more social commitment to the world, because I think we really have to change change things uh, for the better. Um, I don't have, of course, the solution, but I think that, uh, that, that designers are, because they are questioning all the time and they are curious and open-minded, um, that they have a, a, an important role to play in this new post-pandemic world. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Nikki. Thank you for your time and your participation. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, uh, it was a pleasure. I think um, I think it's a great initiative, Mario. And um, uh, I hope uh, students will listen to to everybody here in the design field and that they feel also urged to continue their work. It's a very difficult uh, period to be a student. Because it's also very important to be close to each other, and of course that's not uh, we're not able at the moment. But I hope that will come back, and uh, and I'm sure they will find um, solutions to be together and to share our uh, views and to share our passions. Um, and uh, because well, I think that students will shape the world of tomorrow. So um, good luck, you guys. Thank you very much.